Hi, good evening. This is the July 25th, 2024 meeting of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'm Dave Herrer, Conservation Commission Chair. As a reminder, this meeting is being broadcast to the town's YouTube channel and via Zoom, and is being recorded for publication, later viewing, and administrative purposes. First, let me confirm the presence of members and staff. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. In, in the affirmative. Sue? Reed? Here. Bill? Here. Fred? Here. Paulina? Here. And uh, Chair is here. Um, Deb and Clay? Here. Here. Okay. This open meeting in the Town of Needham Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely via Zoom. All supporting materials have been provided to the Commission members and are available on the Town website. Here are some ground rules for our meeting that will allow smooth and effective operation. I will open and introduce each hearing on, on the agenda and then introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin their project presentation. After conclusion of the applicant's presentation, I will call on staff and then each commission member to provide their comments or questions. Please wait until your name is called. After comments and questions from the staff and commission, I will solicit comments or questions from the public. Please mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. Okay, so I note that Sue has uh, just signed in. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, Let's get started. We I don't believe we have any minutes to review tonight. Um, are there any enforcement or violation updates? No, no. Okay. Um, first on the agenda is uh, 49 Green Street, uh, DEP file 234-911. Uh, my understanding is that uh, they wish to continue the hearing until the next meeting. Is that correct? Correct. And the next meeting would be? Um, it is August 8th. Okay. So I have a motion to uh, continue the hearing for 49 Green Street, DP file 234-911 to August 8th, 2024. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, let's vote. Uh, Bill? Um, uh, aye. Uh, Paulina? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Sue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is 443 Central Avenue, DEP file 234 929. Uh, this is a continued hearing. We had some discussion a couple of meetings ago, and uh, the applicant has submitted some rev revisions that addresses our comments for the most part. Um, and uh, Mary Trudeau, are you here to speak to that? Maybe you can update us on what, what uh, revisions you've made. Sure. Um, for the record, my name is Mary Trudeau, and I'm representing Mohammed Kabar and Avatar Construction this evening in our filing of a notice of intent for a raise and reconstruction at 443 Central Street. We have a DEP file, number 234-929, and we met with you initially about a month ago. At our first meeting with you, we had proposed... Um, a fair amount of work within the 25 to 50 foot buffer zone associated with the wetlands on this property. Um, after hearing the comments of the commission and receiving comments from Debbie Anderson after your site visit, we have changed our site plan to reflect no activity at all within the zero to 50 foot buffer zone. No tree removal, no grading, um, no clearing. So we have left the zero to 50 foot buffer zone as a protective buffer 
for the down gradient wetlands. And we have also left a small portion of the 50 to 75 foot buffer zone intact as a means of preserving portions of the existing tree stand. The site plan that you have before you tonight shows the removal of only three trees. Um, these trees are numbered and keyed to the chart that's on your site plan, uh, which was a deficiency that the commission had noted at our last meeting. And at this point, we are proposing to remove one tree that's within the footprint of the proposed house and two trees that are at the, just above the 50 foot buffer zone. Um, as mitigation for the removal of these three, three trees, we are proposing the replanting of six white pines. And the message that we had received from your agent um, seemed to imply that the commission would like these trees planted within the zero to 50 foot buffer zone area. So that's what we have shown on our site plan. At the meeting that we had with you a month ago, there were several questions asked that were geared towards our project engineer, G Giovanni Fedora, who was with us in the meeting tonight. And he is prepared to answer them for you. So I guess I'd like to cue him up and um, have him talk about the changes that he's made in the site plan as well. Giovanni, it's yours. He might need to be boosted to be a host, but he is in the audience. Just a moment, I'm pulling him over now. Awesome. Good afternoon, my name is Giovanni Federa. I'm the owner of Federa Engineering based out of Danvers, Mass, um, for the record. And I can just share my screen if that's easier, just to kind of go over some of the changes of uh, the revised plan. <clears throat> I know previously we had a lot of work that was closer to the 25 foot wetland setback. Um, and since the revisions have been made, we've um, stayed outside the 50 foot well and setback and we're keeping all disturbance um, outside the 50 foot. So, you know, we've minimized the yard, we've minimized the number of trees that are going to be removed. As uh, Mary mentioned, uh, we, we, you know, we designed the retaining walls that were previously encroaching into the uh, 50 foot uh, setback and just keeping everything outside, as you can see right here. Um, the yard has been reduced, as I've mentioned, and, um, you know, the building placement has stayed the same. Driveway has stayed the same. We do need to have that the house located where it is. It's a very busy road, so we decided, you know, we need somewhat of a decent-sized driveway as much as possible. So, I mean, you know, trying to push it forward is a little impractical on the street. Um, so, where it's located, and we think it's the... You know, best location um, given the circumstances. So um, these are, you know, these are the, the changes. Um, and I think we shifted over some minor modifications with the stormwater system where we previously had the overflow orifice kind of closer to the wetlands. Now it's, um, you know, outside the 50 foot where everything is now. So um, that's the, that's a quick summary. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions um, or bring it back to Mary if she wants to finish off or whatever. So thank you. Um, do you have anything else to add, Mary? No? All right. Uh, let me ask Clay or uh, uh, Deb if they have any comments. Um, no, I think um, they listened to us and they made the revisions we were looking for. All right. Uh, let me ask the commissioners if they have any additional questions or comments. Uh, Sue? Uh, is the field still going in to, to, for raising the... Um... It was something to do with the garage, I think, but outside the 50 foot buffer. 
There's a, a little bit of fill, just kind of uh, level the yard, and it's mostly in this area, kind of where this retaining wall, right on the upside of the retaining wall, would be. Um, <clears throat> in the in the steepest area, you're probably looking at, or the most amount of fill, probably looking at about two feet of fill, just just about in this area right here. So not a whole lot, and, and maybe probably about three feet over here, of fill. Um, so, but yeah, there's there's some fill. Um, it, it's not going to be on top of um, the existing slope as it was previously. It's all going to be retained by this retaining wall, um, and that wall is less than four feet. It's not even a it's not a big wall. Um, you know, normally any wall greater than four feet needs to be engineered, but a wall of this size, it's, it's, um, you know, it's a landscape wall essentially. But other than that, I mean, you can see over in the central part of the rear yard, um, you know, that's not going to be filled in. It's going to be pretty much just, uh, you know, tapered off, leveled out. Um, and, but that's pretty much it for the fill. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Reed, do you have any questions? Comments? Um, no, um, I guess my only, I think we might want to consider just having placards marking off the no disturb zone in the order of conditions, but other than that. Um, yeah, we do have that in there, so. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. Nothing else for me then? Yeah, Bill, do you have anything? Um, I, I have a question. Um, prior, when we met, the reason that uh, was given for removing the trees was that they wouldn't survive the fill. Is that still the reason that you're removing tree number five and six? Yes. Or is there another reason? Tree, tree five and six, if we were to preserve them, would require a tree well that was approximately four feet deep because that's the height of the wall in that area. And it would take up a fairly expansive area to be fully effective. Um, our client has asked that we continue to pursue removal of those two trees. I know they were trees that the commission had expressed an interest in, um, but he felt that by conceding the 50 foot buffer zone, he would like to pursue keeping the yard area as wide as he can in this particular location. Sure. And one of the reasons I ask is that's included in the guidelines to state the reason for the removal. And so it was more for completeness as, yeah. as, as my own information. And um, I did do a site visit and in the uh, 25 to 50 foot zone, there's piles of rocks and things like that and bricks. Are you gonna remove those? Absolutely. Just... The price point for this house will require a cleaned area. We'll take out all that construction debris. I think I had mentioned earlier that some contractors had been using it for storing and staging and we'll just pull all that out. That's just hand work. Yeah. Yeah, if I may, uh, we just been we just owned this for only a few months. So we don't we have nothing to do with what has been done today. Thank you. And is there any um, concern that the containment is too far up? In other words, if you're taking all those bricks and everything, is uh, things going to fall back into the uh, that pretty good size slope? No, they shouldn't. I mean, most of the stuff that's there is piled on the top. I think there's a refrigerator or maybe a stove down in the lower part of the wetlands that we can use. Um, you know, a piece of equipment staged at the top and a chain to drag it up the hill. But most of the other things are tires or just debris from um, cinder blocks, little bits of bituminous and the like, they can all be hand cleaned. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, Brett, do you have any comments? Um, it's it's um, some nice changes. Uh, uh, and it looks like the retaining wall was moved um, a little bit uh, farther from the property line uh, so it's it's less ambitious. Um, I know in the first meeting you expressed a desire to have some privacy during the winter months. 
And I just thought I'd mention that in, I mean, the white pines will give you privacy, although they'll limb up as they get older and taller. Um, but you could consider American holly, Ilex opaca, um, which uh, would uh, give you some, you know, you could, you could put one or two of those in there among the pines, uh, if, and that would give you year round screening. Uh, yeah, I think there will be formal landscaping in addition to what we've shown with these six trees. Um, you know, we know the commission prefers native plant materials and that will be our goal for planting in this area. Yeah, terrific. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Paulina, any, uh, any comments? I don't have any comments. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, as Chair does not have any comments. I appreciate uh, the changes you made and the fact that you listen listened to our concerns. So, uh, if uh, is there anybody in the uh, audience play that uh, has their hands raised? There are no hands raised. Okay. So, if there's no further comments. Uh, Let's have a motion to close the hearing for uh, 443 Central Ave DEP file 234-929. Motion to close. Second. Okay. So let's vote uh, Paulina. Aye. Fred. Aye. Sue. Aye. Bill. Aye. Reed. Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. so much. Have a Thanks. good evening. Now. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. The uh, next project is uh, for, uh, excuse me, uh, 17 George Agate Road DEP file 234 dash uh, 930. I think we had uh, several meetings on this project. Uh, there was some concern about violations of the uh, the uh, Conservation Commission regulations, and uh, there was uh, concern about uh, the riverfront. Uh, mitigation or restoration, however you want to frame it. Uh, and then there was a, like a minor uh, comment on the, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, infiltration system. So uh, I know the, uh, we got a couple, uh, got a letter and we got some plans kind of late in the game. Uh, I, I don't know if all the commissioners had a chance to review it. Uh, I uh, took a look at it. So I think um, maybe it'd be appropriate to let Susan uh, MacArthur, who's representing the uh, applicant, to briefly describe uh, what the changes are, and then uh, we'll go from there. Thank you. Um, again, I'm Susan MacArthur with MacArthur Environmental Consulting. I am not sure if the applicant um, property owner is on the call. Um, he knew about it. He said he would be in attendance. Clay, do you see him? <clears throat> Carl Juice. Uh, I do not. Oh, we've got a hand in the audience. Just a moment. Okay. I mean, if he is there, you maybe you can boost him to panelist as well. But um, in the meantime, anyway, um, I will just summarize. Uh, I apologize for getting the plan over late. I was um, away for last week, but um, I will share my screen with the revised plan. Um, can you see that? Yep. Zoom in a little bit. Um, so um, this 
this plan, uh, the surveyor went back out to the site. Um, originally, I had delineated and measured off with the 100 foot tape, um, as well as the the tank with the trench. And we thought it appropriate to get a more accurate, um, you know, accurately on the plan with survey. So it, it turns out it's about the same. <laughs> um, you know, the tank is still slightly in the 25 foot buffer. Um, my flags are about the same where they were shown before. Um, but anyway, this is a revised plan. And so um, the commission had um, asked about, uh, first up, the commission had asked about the dry wells and um, treating the entire uh, rooftop rather than just um, like the new porch and whatnot. So um, the engineer uh, has new drainage calculations, the rebus. Um, calcs for the dry well, um, and uh, approximately 1,876 square feet of, of roof, um, and treating for a one-inch storm event uh, equates to 156.3 cubic feet, um, and with two dry wells, even though he's only showing one here, but maybe capacity wise um as far as like the um the it almost looks like a caltech system um you know for two uh so installed capacity is 79.26 cubic feet and two would be 158 so slightly above um what uh is needed so that's um for the drywall and then um the commission had asked about uh, mitigating for working in the uh, the riverfront area, the 200 riverfront area to Alderbrook. And um, we are proposing this um, naturalized area. It's, um, I did have the surveyor pick up uh, the tree line. And so this is kind of like the edge of the lawn here. It kind of goes like this. So, um, I, I figured it was appropriate in this corner to um, make this like a no mow area. And these um, square things are uh, placards, represent placards for um, naturalized no mow area. Um, so three of them. And then in addition, um, that since the applicant had removed two trees, even though the surveyor uh, identified all the ones where the stumps were, um, I think the uh, two might be this one and there's one in the back here, but it, he didn't pick that up because I think soil was on top of it at the time from that, um, from the trench, trenching here. But um, anyway, so the two trees, so, uh, with the mitigation of two to one, we are proposing four trees. Um, and I put two in this um, mitigation area, the NOMO. Uh, so it'll be two um, uh, pin oaks with a um, wildflower seed mix understory, and then two red maples on the side closest uh, to Sutton Road. And um, also, um, I know the commission had a lot of discussion at the last hearing about the tank being in the 25 foot, um, you know, locally regulated buffer zone. And uh, they were concerned about um, safety and, and that type of thing. And I did a little bit of research and um, propane tanks are fairly um, durable and typically covered with like a anti-corrosion um, coating on them. And, you know, the soil is on top of that and um, they can last an average of like 20 to 30 years. Um, and uh, the tank, you know, if it were to leak, it would be absorbed to the ground um, and rather than into the air. So, um, that's just a little, little bit of background on 
for paintings. Um, and that is all I, I have. Um, I think I covered everything that the commission had, was looking for. Okay, anything else? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I just know, you know, for the record, uh, we did, we had discussed safety uh, of the tank, and I, I believe that the commission was satisfied uh, on the safety issue. Uh, the big okay. discussion was, you know, the tank being in the 25-foot zone and uh, whether we would require the uh, applicant to move the tank back out 25 foot zone or have some other uh, quote unquote compensation. Uh, so uh, that's something maybe we can discuss uh, further tonight. Um, so uh, if there's no other comment from the applicant or its consultant, let me ask uh, the staff, Deb or Clay, do you have any comments? Clay, did you um, get a chance to review the the revisions? Um, I did have a, a brief opportunity. <clears throat> I looked over the the riverfront standards. Um, the mitigation area appears to comply uh, with the two to one requirement replacement of uh, lawn to renaturalized area. Uh, I would just note. Um, there is a distinction between what's on the, the plan and what's in the narrative that you provided, Sue. Um, I know, two, 252 versus 272. Yeah, I the, had sent the 252 to the surveyor, but he made it as 272 uh, square feet, as right here, which is fine. Uh, it's larger and probably it's better. There, but this, this plan also shows... Um, the project increased impervious surface area. If you scroll a little bit to the right there, um, kind of that lowest block that you're hovering over there, project increased impervious surface within inner riparian zone. Um, oh, oh. That hasn't been updated to disclude the deck. Uh, it was determined the deck was pervious, that it's slatted and underneath it's a, it's it. a standard pervious surface. So, uh, the deck would not be included in the calculations for two to one. So I'm just clarifying because I, I believe that when you're accounting only for the porch as noted in the narrative, I, I do believe that this mitigation area complies with that two to one replacement. It doesn't appear to though, if you use the 406 number, I just think that number needs to be updated. Okay. That's pretty much as, as far as I got uh, with the review. Um, for the the riverfront standards, as I said, it it appears that this new mitigation area complies. Uh, it's got the two to one replacement of trees, both inside and outside that mitigation area. Um, I might recommend spreading the the emblems a bit. Um, I know it's matching the tree line, and it's still a little bit within the twenty five foot. Um, the the pre existing lawn is through that area uh, on the back end there, but uh, an additional emblem or something just to continue down. Uh, where where the tree line meets the 25 foot going towards the street might not be a a bad thing the commission would like to just to consider. Otherwise, it it does look like the mitigation applies. Okay, thanks, Clay. Um, all right, let's uh, go to the commission for any comments or questions. Uh, Sue. Yeah. Um. It, it, it's looking much better. I I still um have a concern about with the propane tank. Um, we've actually never dealt with a propane tank, I don't think, before. Um, so question is really how far it should be away from um, wetlands. Um, uh, I feel that um, uh, it's, it, it's a big impermeable block uh, underground and it's gonna affect drainage. Um, I know that the the top is exposed. I've seen them. I have one right next door. Um, they have a, a fake um, a stone over it, but I'm assuming it would be exposed for for refueling, um, and which might be another issue, uh, being so far away from the wetlands or so near for the, to the wetlands. Um, so there are issues involved here that we've never dealt with it. Um, and I guess my question is, should it be run through DEP 
with this? I mean, how, how actually how far away should it be from the wetlands? I guess that's my main question with, um, you know, drainage changes and I, it, 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 it's not following any of the regulations within the 25 foot. Um, so that's basically my question. You know, so I, I could address uh, part of your question that, uh, you know, the these tanks are regulated by the uh, fire department and there's, you know, state and local codes relative to that. Uh, as far as the wetlands issue, uh, if there is a leak of a tank like this, it uh, the gas, the, the propane's a liquid in a tank and then it becomes a gas. If it, yeah, um, okay. yeah. The gas, uh, I think Susan mentioned that it gets absorbed by the soil, but it really evaporates uh, and goes out into the atmosphere. The uh, propane is not soluble in water, okay? Uh, yeah, more, more my question is how it's gonna affect the drainage. I mean, that's a big impermeable block, how it's gonna affect the drainage yeah. too. Uh, yeah, I, my opinion is, a civil engineer is a, it's not going to have much impact. Uh, I think the um, the issue that we had talked about mostly before was the fact it was in the twenty five foot zone, and it does you know it's a violation of our regulation, and you know whether or not we should move it or ask for it to be moved, and how far away it should be from the from the wetlands. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's go to uh, Reed. Any uh, any questions, comment? Yeah, um, I, I think we had discussed last time that um, you know, it, it was unclear whether the tree that got removed in the front um, was a significant tree or not that um, would require three to one replacement. So, um, you know, I, I think if you could add another tree, I think that that would be um, address my concern there since you know it was cut down we we, we don't we don't know what it was actually <laughs> was this one that was cut down by the applicant or was it but, one, like, yeah, the one yeah yeah the one up front was it it was um 30 inch i think well but but you, you're supposed to measure at breast height right so you, you can't well, I know. I mean, there's a stump. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else, Reed? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I assume we're going to have a separate discussion about fines and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Bill. Yeah, I, I'd like to talk about the placement of the um, propane tank, and I think it's contrary to the performance standards in the wetland protection regulations. And I think you agree with that because you filed a waiver request for it. I assume that's what this is for. And that, um, you know, the performance standards simply say that any construction within the buffer zone must be designed to preserve a minimum of 25 feet of undisturbed natural vegetation and soils adjacent to a vegetated wetland or bank. And I think this is, contrary to that. And so um, I would suggest that it be repositioned. And, um, you know, that's my feeling on the matter. And I, I don't know how to, I, I don't feel that it, um, there could be any other, uh, there might be some other resolve to that. But, um, and then last time we talked about this, one of your uh, reasons that the waiver should be granted is that it would be an economic hardship. And I'm not sure how much it would cost, but I don't think it's that much to redig a hole and move it um, into the 50 foot zone. Uh, so that's, that's my feeling on that. And um, I, I simply think it should be moved out of the 25 foot zone. Um. May I respond? Yes. Oh, let, let's, you know, hear the rest of uh, the commission uh -huh. and you can respond. Uh, Fred, do you have any comments? 
Um, I had a follow-up question for Clay. Um, uh, you mentioned um, possibly adding another placard beyond the um, the other th the three that are on the plan, um, and I, I was interested about what what we were going to do here. It, am I right that there's lawn going? basically up to the uh up to the edge of the stream and that that lawn is going to continue to be maintained mowed etc et uh, may i respond yes i was gonna say if, if sue you want to just touch on where the the tree line and, and what vegetation type there is yeah um so I, when the surveyor went back out, I had him pick up the edge of the tree line. So it, see this dashed, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but the dash line, it kind of follows like that around and kind of comes like this. So this is all vegetated kind of wooded area. And this um, beyond that, which includes this area, it was all grass, even where the tank was. And that was, I was going to comment on that um, the trench and the hole for the tank was put in lawn and it's now covered over and I haven't been out there, but the intent is to loam and seed it uh, and it'll be lawn again, um, except for the little uh, vent on the top there, but you know, that it is required, but um, so yes, the mitigation area is within existing lawn is proposed within for within existing lawn. Okay, that that answers my question then. So the the tree line that's the tree line with the dotted line, and that's not yeah. existing lawn. No. Uh, right. Okay. Right. And there's the bank of the brook. All right. right there. So there's that wooded buffer. Okay. okay, no other questions. Uh, all right, Paulina, anything? Do you have any additional comments? Okay. Um, so uh, I think uh, the uh, revisions addressed uh, the issues. Uh, I only have one comment on the, uh, the stormwater system. I'd like to see the model number and manufacturer of the proposed uh, infiltration chambers. Okay. So we could verify the sizing, but it, the sizing looks appropriate. Um, and then, you know, getting to this issue of, of, of the tank, um, I'll give you my, my spin on this um, and the commissioners, you know, can feel free to, to comment, but, uh, it seems like this was a mistake. I don't think it was uh, was done. Um, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, Maliciously. Yeah, you know, or pur purposely. I, you know, I, based on what the uh, contractor said before, it's, it sounds like a mistake. And so, you know, it's true that if if uh, the contractor or developer came to us, you know, beforehand, which was what we, you know, they were asked to do we would have said, hey, move the thing back a couple of feet out of the, uh, you know, out of the 25 foot zone. I, I don't think there's any reason to reject the ta underground tank because uh, of some uh, wetlands or drainage issues. And I'd be happy to, you know, discuss that, but uh, that's just uh, my opinion. Um, the, uh, what's done is done. And, and so, the way I look at this is, you know, what would be the best uh, situation for uh, the environment and the wetlands? I think the commission members would like to see uh, that the applicant uh, make some concession. I won't call it punishment or retribution, but, you know, some concession uh, for this, uh, you know, violation of the regulation. And as I see it, uh, there's three general things that could be done. One is to move the tank and heard several 
of the commissioners would like that. Oh. The second would be a, a fine. And, you know, we haven't really discussed, you know, what what level of fine or anything. And the third would be to provide some additional uh, mitigation. Um, and mm. I, I see that as maybe adding on to what's already proposed to uh, uh, address the uh, increase in uh, uh, area in the riverfront. Um, and I think uh, that third uh, option would be the best uh, for the environment and for the for the wetlands. So okay. with, with that is it's just a preface. I think uh, like to to hear from the the other commissioners because I I would like us to kind of come to some conclusion here uh, tonight so we can move forward and let the contractor move forward on this project. So you know, put up your hand if you have any comments. I see uh, Fred, you have your hand up. Well, yeah, I was uh, I was going to suggest um, in regard to further mitigation. Suppose suppose you just extended the naturalized area that runs looks like it runs south to north. Suppose you just extended it up to the property line to the north um, instead of having it cut off near the tank there do you follow my yeah my idea yeah so I mean, another... that would be that would make it um less ambiguous and less tempting to intrude on the naturalized uh border there between the the lawn and the brook All right, anything else, Fred? Nope. Uh, Reed? So, um, think, um, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's uh, worth the resources to relocate the tank. Um, I think, I don't, I'm not concerned about setting a, a bad precedent here because I do think that if we, if there was something that was actually gonna be detrimental to the resource area, that was that was built without our permission in the in the buffer zone. I think we would require that to be removed. Um, but I think given the information we know about the tank and and really it doesn't I don't think it poses a hazard to the the resource area. I, I, I'm fine leaving it there. Um, but I do think it's important that there's some kind of um, financial penalty to create a deterrent to sort of. Uh, for future future actions um, like this, right, where 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 people are building in the twenty five foot zone without our permission, so um, and and I, I'm open to however that's going to be, whether it's um, you know I think Fred's idea of extending the the resource area uh, or sorry the buffer zone or the mitigation area, I think is a good one. Um, you know I assume we would require some additional trees or shrubs in that area as well. Um, so I think that those are my thoughts on the matter. Okay, thanks. Um, Sue? Yeah, um, I have to go with the, the, the um, alternative. Um, plumping a propane tank, a propane gas tank um, into within the 25 foot um, buffer with no permit. Uh, it, it, I mean, just even with a permit um, it is against all, all our regulations. And um, uh, so I feel strongly it, it would be a horrible precedent. We have lots of new houses going on. This is going to come up and up again. I don't think we've ever run into a propane gas tank before. Um, if we allow this to be in the 25 foot, um, uh, I, I just, I don't think that would be a, a good at all. Um, so um, I stand on, what number was it? Uh, removing the propane removing the propane tank i mean there was no permit involved in doing this number one um but number two it doesn't it doesn't it, it's against all our, our regulations and number three therefore it would set a terrible precedent when, when it comes up again so um i guess that's how i feel okay thanks um anybody else any uh clay is there anybody in the audience that um uh, has their hand raised
No. Uh, there are no hands in the audience. All right, um, Susan, do you have any final comments on this? Um, I think the applicant logged out. I can't. I don't see him. Um, not that you know. I guess that doesn't matter too much. But um, I think he would be willing to extend the mitigation area to the back of the property and given the other comment about um, the 30 inch uh, tree up front um, you know to to add another tree we could put it in the the back there um, you know it obviously not too close to the propane tank but uh, I think it would fit in the back there um, and yeah, I mean, I think that would be doable. I think he would agree to that. Okay. Um, so if there's no further comments, uh, Deb, I want to ask you just a question. Like, how, what, what do you think the best way would be to close this out? To close the hearing, and then uh, we voted. There was a waiver request. I don't know if the applicant had uh, put in their... Uh, thousand dollar fee for that yet but do we have to oh. wait that fee before we vote on that or what's the proper procedure here may i have something now I, i'm sorry um he had stated to me that he wanted to wait to see the outcome um you know if they were gonna if you're gonna make him move the tank and then he wouldn't be in the 25 like he was just didn't yeah well it. i i mean right now it seems like there are uh the commission is split on this. So, you know, the only way to resolve it is have a vote. And, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's appropriate to have a vote just on that issue, right? So it would mm. probably be a vote on the waiver, right? Or that, that's- well, Yeah, you will have to vote on the waiver. Um... So that's what I'm saying. We, we Can we close the hearing and vote on the waiver? Or so I don't have a draft to issue because we just got the updated information. Yeah. So then we end up in that situation where we've closed the hearing. We have 21 days to issue it and we're waiting, you know, for um for a waiver fee check for an updated plan. Um we didn't get any uh, paper didn't... plans for this either. So we need those. So how do how do we get to the conclusion about moving a tank, could we do a straw poll? Would that would that work? Or because uh, I think we need to give the uh, applicant some clear direction. Mm, do you have any ideas, Clay? Um, I I do, and I, I would also like to say uh, Sue just raised her hand as well. But I I don't see a reason why you couldn't vote on waivers before closing the hearing. I'm not sure. I was trying to play out the scenarios in my head. I'm not sure there's re any reason you you couldn't make the motions towards the waiver, the waiver fee, and the like before closing the hearing. Um, though, I guess the reason why you wouldn't do that is if if there was a plan revision or something, you'd have to revote on those that the waiver would the motion would no longer stand. You know, if there was revisions that affected that. But I don't see why you couldn't do either a straw poll or a formal waiver vote. Um, you know, barring barring any changes before the closing of the hearing. All right, so, Clay. I'm sorry. We're so as far as you were talking about um, enlarging the restoration area. So, were you talking about towards the back property line, um, or coming forward more towards the street? I was just confused. Um, I, I think in my comments. I mean, I, I was thinking something similar to what Fred had mentioned, you know, closing off the back area uh, toward towards the back property line. But I, I think extending emblems, having more than three emblems and marking the rest of the 25 foot where the, the tree line and the 25 foot do match up heading towards the street. Mm -hmm. A couple emblems in there, I think, would help prevent encroachment. Um, I think that in the order of conditions, there would be a distinction between the in perpetuity mitigation area because that that can't change you know, for the duration, as long as the porch or that impervious surface is there in the future, if there was, you know, vegetation changes or a project that that proposed to encroach, it would require its own separate filing, but it, it wouldn't, the emblems wouldn't be representative 
of the same, the 25 foot, as well as the mitigation area, they, they would be kind of two separate entities marked by the same type of emblem. Mm. But essentially I would extend those emblems. I would say the whole 25 foot, um, obviously you're in the middle of discussing whether the, the propane tank should remain in the 25 foot. And I think where there's currently lawn, you have a proposed mitigation area. So I'd emblem off where the mitigation area is and continue that line meeting the tree line where the tree line matches up with the 25 foot and marking kind of that side of the property, a, a combination of those two lines to be the do not, you know, do not disturb. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Oh, uh, Sue, you had your hand up? Yeah, I just want to make one last comment. It's I think we become, or we are becoming in this particular piece of property, very lenient. And um, I, I mean, it's someone who started um, building with no permit at all. Um, uh, and um, I just feel there should be definitely some enforcement with this propane tank, or it could lead to problems in the future with other houses being built. And I know they're, they're all having the, the, the propane gas tanks. So um, I just want to stay with that last comment. I think the even more um, blatant issue is the construction of the deck and the patio after the work was stopped, but they were allowed to continue to work inside so as not to punish the contractors. Yeah, okay, so um, I think um, there's, there's several things on table. One is uh, whether or not we're going to require them to move the tank, uh, and I think if 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 we uh, don't require them to move the tank, then uh, there was uh, a suggestion, and I think it might be accepted that the uh, restoration area is ex would be expanded. Okay, that's number one, and number two, uh, there were two instances of. Uh, you know, violation of the regulation work without a permit. So we could also uh, consider, um, you know, some type of fine for that behavior as well. So I would put that on the table, but uh, I guess we're gonna continue this hearing. And I think that uh, I would like to get, give some direction to the, uh, to the contractor as to, uh, you know, whether or not we want them to move the tank and uh, expand and or they're not going to move the tank expanding area. And so I'd like to get some sense of the or, or give the contractor some sense of the commission, you know, how they might vote. Uh, Helena, I see you got your hand up. So uh, yeah, I have a, um, since we're going to continue the hearing anyway, is it possible for Deb? To, for you to reach out to the circuit writer or DP? I already did. I haven't heard back yet. Um, so I'll follow up with them tomorrow, see if I can um, get a sense of, of what they think. Okay. About, about what? That's uh, all, the the yeah. position of the, the tank and what DEP's opinion is on it. Yeah, I think that's important. All right, so I guess uh, we'll hunt this down the road. Um, but I think uh, with regard to the uh, the options on the table, uh, move the tank or don't move the tank and expand the restoration area, number one. Number two, some level of fines for, uh, you know, abusing our regulations and not showing up to talk about it as well. I think that has some impact. <clears throat> Any other final comments? All right, so then let's have a motion to uh, continue this hearing to, uh, what was the next date? I forget. The 8th. To uh, August 8th, 2024. So moved. Second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Polina? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Um, Fred? Aye. Sue? 
Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. Thanks, Susan. Okay, thank you. Right. Take care. All right. The uh, next item on the agenda is uh, 131 Oxbow Road DP file 234-917 request for a partial certification. It's of actually a request for a minor modification. Okay. I revised the agenda and sent it to the town, but I forgot to send it to you guys. So okay. it's, it's a minor modification. Sorry. Request for a minor modification. And we have a couple gentlemen, uh, the applicant and the contractor. So maybe one of you could briefly uh, show us what you're proposing. Hi. Uh, yeah, Ben Cherko, um, representing Ben Hayworth at uh, 131 Oxbow. Now, um, I don't think I have the ability to put a plan up for you to see it. Hopefully you have a plan in front of you. Um, Happy to share my screen if that's helpful. That'll be helpful, Ben. Thanks. I, I'm the contractor. Um, so we have a, um, an order of conditions for this job and uh, we started work. We actually poured the footing uh, yesterday and um, we're trying to work through the pool layout and um, we've come up with a plan for the pool and uh, the layout that works on this site that uh, we've gone over with the pool installer and with Ben um, is a little different than the layout that we had proposed. You know, we filed a, uh, uh, for the order conditions for the plan. Uh, our pool patio, if you can see like in the middle of the, uh, the plan, um, Outside the buffer zone, I don't know how long I could, there, Ben's, I think actually Ben's showing you. Down a little bit, down a little lower. Down a little, yeah, right about, right about down, you know, down a little bit from there, Ben, if you can, into the triangle. That triangle area mm -hmm. is inside the, the 100 foot buffer zone. And uh, in the previous plan that's approved, the pool deck was not inside the, uh, the buffer zone. Uh, to the right of that, there was a fire pit with that radius, that circle. That fire pit has been moved or removed. And um, so that circle radius and that little triangle are gone. And then to the right of it, where we have the hot tub, uh, was the hot tub. The hot tub's being moved, and there's going to be a uh, standalone fire pit there, not gas, just a you know, wood burning uh, fire pit that goes there. But uh, so the net result of all this, of us, changing these uh, the, the pool patio around is uh, an additional 47 square feet that we're into the buffer zone with. And uh, we're, we're here before the commission to see if we can get a, get this approved as a minor modification. So we can you know then file for a, a pool a pool permit after that. So the area where in, in like behind the house where it says hot tub, that really hasn't changed. The hot tub isn't there. It's going to be a fire pit. But that that whole rectangular area is pretty much the same as what it was before. But where the fire pit, the round fire pit was, that's gone. So that circle is out of the buffer zone. And then we've added a little bit on the pool deck. Okay, thanks. Um, any of the commissioners have uh, a question or comment? You can just raise your hand. Seems pretty straightforward. Um, okay, it seems there's no comments. Uh, we, we we vote on this. Yeah, you vote to approve the minor modification. Okay. Uh, all right. I have a uh, a motion to uh, approve a minor modification for the uh, certificate of, or right. for the uh, order of conditions. Right. Yeah. 
uh, for 131 Oxbow Road, DP file 234-917. I think Fred had his hand up. Oh. Can, I can I, yeah, I, I had it up briefly. Um, do, do Clay or Deb have any uh, comments uh, that I would want to hear if they had any? Um, so the work is outside the 200 foot uh, riverfront area. So, you know, as far as the impervious and, and that um, isn't as critical, um, it's in the, the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, they don't need to take down any trees or anything for this, you know, it's a very slight revision. Um, so I, I don't see any issues. Thanks, thanks. I just wanted to hear your comment on that. Thank you, I appreciate it. I appreciate that, Fred, thank you. All right, uh, anybody else? Right. So, somebody want to make the motion for uh, 131 right. Oxbow Road, DP file 234-917, minor modification to order of conditions. So moved. Second. Second. All right, let's vote. Fred? Aye. Reed? Aye. Bill? Aye. Paulina? Aye. Sue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. Take care. Um, no other items on the agenda. I um, did make some comments uh, on a uh, word file for the um, Needham Wetlands regulations that was part of the package. So thank you Dave, for doing that. Yeah, I you know I didn't get into doing any changes in the language. I was just pointing out some things I thought uh, we could change or or kind of uh, update or whatever uh, to get some feedback from Fred uh, and I know some some of your other commissioners may be looking into this as well. Uh, I guess you know whatever. The progress that we make on uh, our comments, we need to post it uh, on our uh, biweekly hearings, uh, just to you know stay in conformance with the uh, open meeting law. And at some point, if we do draft up some changes, then we probably should notice a uh, hearing, a public hearing, and then uh, you know go through the changes at the hearing. But we don't need to go to town meeting or anything like that unless we change the bylaw. So my my initial thought is, you know, let's let's not go to the bylaw. Seems you know basically a good shell, and the regulations are where the details are. So if we want to make any changes, I'll make them to the regulations. And further, uh, uh, some of the, some of the guidelines that we have. Uh, like yeah, the, I do. I will put the checklist up. I know that you wanted yeah, to look at the, that. The, we have the, the checklist. The We have the tree guideline. We have the uh, wildlife assessment guideline. And I want to develop a, like a stormwater you know, management guideline uh, that would reference the bylaw as well. And so those three guidelines... I, I would propose that we incorporate those into the into the regulations themselves. I, I think as far as hierarchy, you have the bylaw, the regulations, and then any kind of guidelines. But pull the guidelines into the into the regulations uh, would would make them more official, at least in my in my mind. So, still a lot of work to do, but uh, I, I encourage all of you to uh, to look at the regulations and feel free to. Uh, you know, to mark or indicate, uh, you know, what, what your thoughts are. I would just say it, it's a Word document, so turn on uh, the review button, and then whatever comments you make, we'll, we'll know, you know, that it's from a specific individual. And at some point, we can uh, pull them all together. Yeah, and we can add it to the agenda as a discussion item. Yeah, so I don't know. Anybody have any further thoughts on that? Any, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I started reading them. I didn't get all the way through. Um, you know, I think there's there's a fair amount of cleanup that could probably be done just to make them a little clearer. Um, so, um, and I'm happy to sort of like, uh, you know, once we have all the comments to kind of take the lead, it's sort of redrafting. Um, yeah, um, I know one thing. One thing I think is important. The more I look at it, the more I uh, think it is important. Is to you know update the the checklist uh, and the requirements uh, for the submittals, because I think that, that's one thing that, that always kind of takes up our time. It's telling people, I got to go back, I got to do this, I got to do that. So, uh, you know, especially with regard to trees and with regard to uh, stormwater, because, um, you know, some people think, you know, this, the stormwater isn't an issue because the mass regulations exempt single family houses, but uh, Needham has a bylaw. If if the uh, thing comes to us first, then you know it's our responsibility to enforce the bylaw. It's the way I read the bylaw. But also, our regulations require infiltration. Although it's you know doesn't spell out any of the details. So yeah. I also I think it we should um, make it clear when the fifty foot buffer zone applies, um, and I mean maybe or maybe just make it kind of a presumption that it applies unless um, there's some reason it shouldn't. Yeah, apply. no, I, I agree with that, and I know that Needham has a document that um, it's a specific wildlife assessment document that's somewhat different than the state, but. Yeah, I, I, Paulina, you know, might be able to chime in on that as well. I, mean, uh, I don't know how much different it is, but I... well, the level of assessment for um, you know, these properties, um, you know, you're going to be looking at whether there is anything um, significant, any you know, anything special about the particular area that you couldn't find in adjacent areas so as far as wildlife habitat assessments on you know these properties i think they're often just going to come back as there's nothing significant or special right. um you know yeah. cutting trees or other wildlife habitat on them yeah that, well that's why i think we should just have the 50 foot apply unless like you know i don't think it should apply in like circumstances like george, george agate right where it's just but like, you know, if there's an actual habitat there for wildlife, I think it should apply. But Deb, you brought up something on uh, the Central Ave project that, you know, I don't think we ever had thought about it. And that is, you know, you look at what's in the, say, the 25 to 50 foot zone. And if you just look at that by itself, it's not that significant. But if it's abutting some greater, uh, you know, right, which is how we've previously determined if we're enacting the 50 foot, yeah. is if it is attached to a larger area that it's yeah. part of a wildlife habitat. Yeah, you know? maybe, yeah. so that's something I think. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's what the, the, the regulations say right now. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it just struck me, it was the first time in the several years I've been on a commission that something like that came up, but, you know. Let's... Well, yeah, it's kind of like if you have a wildlife habitat area and you have all of these houses along the outside fringe of it and you keep allowing everyone to go into that area, then you're eventually, you know, taking chunks out of it. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You know. Bill, you got your hand up? Uh, just wondering about the logistics of uh, how this uh, change into the um, document would work. So you have a document that you sent back with changes. And if we want to make changes or, you know, I don't know, comments and things of that nature, we do it to that document, not a new document. Yeah, do it to that document. And you can either, I would, I would click on the, uh, you know. And then send button. it back. I would click on the review button and I'll. Uh, you know, any comments you make in the, in the body of the document will show up in a different color. Or you can uh, add a comment. There's a there's another button in Word at the top where right. you can actually add a comment. So either one uh, would work. And then send that document back and uh, 
you know, we'll try to compile, send it back to Dev, so, and we'll try to compile all the comments, you know, uh, at this point, you know, because there, there may be several people uh, commenting, uh, all the comments might not be in a single document. So that's what I was getting to. Yeah. yeah. So how but, I mean, the that? ideal way to do it would be to have it posted on some uh, site that, you know, the only one person could change it at a time. But that violates the open meeting law. And uh, so we don't want to do that. Or maybe, you know, get all your comments ready and then download it, add it and send it right back. So it's always yeah. there. Whatever, you know, whatever, I think we can deal with it. Uh, the important thing is just get get some comments in, you know. Right, right. You don't even have to, you don't even have to use that document. You could just take a clean sheet of paper and, you know, note the uh, section of the regs and what your comment is, you know, if that's if that's you know more comfortable. Uh, and also, you know, uh, Google other towns and and look at other uh, in other. Uh, Regulations. It's always useful. I was looking at the town of Canton. That's your, that's where you live, right, Deb? What? Yeah. I was looking at the town of Canton. Yep. They have a really great uh, checklist. I think. Oh, okay. Uh, really? Well, actually, I yeah, I I was just in Canton last night, actually. So I filled out that checklist many times. Yeah. yeah. I can put that up as well if, if you want with our um, checklist so you can compare. All right. Any uh, any other comments? So we do have the draft um, Exhibit A to review for 443. Okay. Play, if you don't mind. So since they did do all the revisions, um, you know, it's pretty um, boilerplate, honestly. Um, so if we're going to the special conditions, did they do soil test pits yet? No, I don't think so. I don't think they did either. So um, under pre-construction, um, we have our um, prior to installation, the soil test pit should be excavated. Um, so that's on there. Um, and then under the planting work and monitoring, um, removing three trees, planting six eastern white pine, and they should be a minimum caliper of 2.5 inches um, within the 25 to 50 foot. Um, and then I had, um, they would mark the 50 foot buffer zone with a minimum of four permanent markers and placards. Um, Can I make one comment about sure. the, the uh, caliper? Mm -hmm. Like two and a half inch caliper, uh, it's a pretty big tree, but I, from what I gather, when you look at like evergreens, uh, the requirements are more given in height rather than caliper. I think, doesn't our updated... Shrink? No, and that's my comment that I have. It's like, you know, we need to, with, uh, with uh, you know, evergreen trees, we need to give a height criterion. So why are they different than deciduous trees? I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying that, that almost virtually every tree policy that I've read and also uh, in uh, looking at... Uh, I usually, trees, yeah, I see six to eight. Yeah, eight or, to or eight, to, eight to 12. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I'm just bringing that up. Maybe, you know, we don't have to change it now, but uh, I think that's something that we need to, uh, we need to change. Okay. Um. So the 50 foot buffer zone will, will have to be marked in perpetuity. Um, and the restoration plantings, six trees should be monitored for two years. Um, the O and M plan, I think they gave us one, but um, it needs to be signed by the new owners. So since this is a builder, um, 
you know, I'll ask, I'll ask Mary and the, um, and the builder to have whomever purchases the property sign off on that so that we can keep it in the file. Uh, and I think that's all I had that was of note. Yeah, looks good. Any, any, anybody have any comments? Sounds good. Looks good. Okay. Right. So I'll, um, I'll put those, put that out for signatures. Um, I'll be in tomorrow morning. We close at 1230 tomorrow. So if anyone has time to stop by before that, otherwise it'll just be on the front table when you have a chance. All right, so uh, let's vote on this. We have a motion to issue an order of conditions for 443 Central Avenue DEP file 234-929. Motion to issue. Second. All right, let's vote. Bill? Aye. Reed? Aye. Paulina? Aye. Sue? Aye. Fred? Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right, great. One more down. Okay. Any Anything else anybody wants to mention? Or Are we getting a, another seventh member? Another what? Oh, another commission. Oh, yeah. The, okay. uh, the uh, board of the select board votes on the 30th next Tuesday uh, for this new uh, uh, member. Uh, her name is Clary Cotu. Uh, she's an uh, uh, environmental professional. She's uh, worked on the side of uh, industry. She worked for Keolis quite a bit. Uh, she has also done some work for the Mass, uh, what's it called, Mass Coalition of Conservation Commissions or Mass the, the Association? Association. Mass Association of Conservation. Yes, she she's done some work for them. So seems like knowledgeable person, and uh, I think she shares the uh, commission's uh, you know belief that you know this isn't the this isn't the person that um, uh, that was recruited um, by you, you. You came up with her yourself, Dave. Is that right? Uh, no. Uh, to be, uh, I don't know. Well, the the Needham town of Needham has a website and it has like a volunteer page. And if you're interested yeah. in volunteering, you. Uh, you know, fill out the form, and then, uh, in in this case, uh, the uh, vice chair of the select board, uh, Heidi Frail, uh, and myself interviewed. In this case, there were three candidates. Okay, and Correct. most of the time, when the opening pops up, and at least in the conservation commission, there's only been one candidate, and you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, boards and or, or commission committees and. Uh, commissions that, that haven't found a candidate, you know, so they're operating at a, uh, you know, a reduced uh, load or a reduced uh, committee. Uh, I think, you know, the Conservation Commission, I think, attracts some uh, more attention, more interest. So we had three. And, uh, you know, the uh, choice was... Uh, this individual, you know, mostly because uh, she is qualified with uh, training and education experience, but also, you know, she's a woman too. And, you know, we want to keep diversity mm -hmm. in our committee, right? Well, it sounds like some great experience that you might be bringing, bringing aboard. So, good yeah, work. absolutely. So, I'll have Elisa send out kind of our welcome email and packet information so then um she can have that when she starts yeah so we, the the vote's going to be on the 30th and then you know um, 
I'm sure that she'll be uh, at our next meeting. Yeah. Okay, great. So uh, there's nothing else. Let's let's adjourn. Can we um, make a motion to adjourn? I'll, I'll move we adjourn. Here, Second. Here. Second. Yes. All opposed? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, great. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night. 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 Thank Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Clay. Night. Bye-bye. Night.